Thank you for taking the time to listen to our weekly service. This is a listener-supported ministry, and we ask that you pray and see what God would have you give. Now let's get to our sermon for today. <clears throat> well, if Glenn would learn not to put his nose in other people's business, he wouldn't have hurt. He would have got sucked. That's a good one. Did you spend all night thinking? All I had to do is look at you. Look what he did to his wife. I mean, both y'all now. I'm glad for the songs that uh, Fred picked because it's right down the line of what I'm going to speak into this morning. I'm going to call every one of us in this room and those who would be listening and hearing uh, this streamed to get honest. So many times uh, we uh, are dishonest with ourselves. We think more highly of ourselves than we ought to think. Uh, We do it all a living just for ourselves. Instead of having a life that is living to please God. I want you to turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. We... I want to read a couple verses here, a few verses. Because it's the Word of God that's quick and powerful, and sharper than a two-edged sword, piercing asunder the soul and spirit. And I want us to look at the Word and realize that in this room, and anyone is listening, there's three types of people. See, as I, if I read this, if you can name, as the Scriptures name, these three types of people. And... You and I are one of these three. There's no uh, mixing. It's not halfway here and halfway there. It's you are one of these three. I am one of these three. We'll start reading in verse 9 of chapter 2 of 1 Corinthians. But as it is written, I hath not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them to us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the Spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Now we have not we now we have received not the spirit of the world but the spirit which is of God that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God which things also we speak not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth but which the holy ghost teacheth comparing spiritual things with spiritual but the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of God For their foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judges or discerneth all things, yet he himself is judged or discerned of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? (laughs) But we have the mind of Christ. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk, and not with meat, for hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able, for ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envying, and strife, and divisions, are ye not carnal, and walk as men? For while one saith, I am of Paul, and another, I'm Apollos. Are ye not carnal? Lord, I pray that you help each one of us. Help me. Help each one that's in the hearing of my voice to seriously put out all other things 
that clog our minds with all activities and all bunches of thoughts and things about our lives and, and illnesses and problems and difficulties and work and all. And I pray that these uh, moments together here today, we will become very, very open and honest. You search the hearts, Lord. You know all about us. You know exactly who we are, what we are, and why we are. You know what our purposes are in life, lives, our lives. And Lord, I pray that you'll just use this word out this morning to help us to realize who you are and what you've done for us and who we are in relationship to thee. In Christ's name, amen. What are the three? What's the names? What's the topics, the names that's given here of the three types of people that are sitting right here? Natural man, carnal, carnal, and spiritual. And so the question is today is, which one is you? Which one are you? Which one am I? Look at verse fourteen of chapter two. It says, uh, <clears throat> "But the natural man." Now this is a man that has not had any a divine, supernatural happening. In his life. God has not worked in his life. He has not allowed him to. When I say he, I'm talking about human humans now, not just uh, men. Uh, men and women. He received, or he has not taken into his life, the things of God. He has not allowed the third person of the Trinity, God himself, the Holy Spirit, to enter into his life. He has rejected him. Therefore, God has not done any supernatural work in his life. He's not allowed him to do so. Even though God stands at the door and knocks. If God, any man that, uh, that will open the door and allow him to come in will find life and receive a transformation. Not, not just uh, turning over a new leaf. He becomes a new creation in Christ Jesus. The Holy Spirit dwells within every person who trusts Christ as their Savior. I can't explain how. I can't explain all that, but that's what the Bible says. And folks, I believe every word of this book. And you should too. When a person is, rejects Christ, he is dead. Uh, keep your finger there in 1 Corinthians and turn over a few books to Ephesians you got 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, Galatians, and Ephesians. Uh, and uh, I, I want you to look at what it tells us here concerning the natural man. Ephesians chapter 2. This is a biography of us. And you hath he quickened, that means hath he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sin, wherein in times past ye walked according to the course of this world. This is the description of a natural man. His direction of his life, his walk, uh, is in what way? He walked according to the course of this world. What is the world? That's human society with God left out. It's the cosmos. We walk... Our lives according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now work in the children of disobedience. Who's that? Who's, who's the prince of the power of the air? Satan. Satan. We're allowing him to dictate our thoughts, our actions, what we do. And uh, verse 3, Among whom all we all had our own conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh. Before we've been made alive in Christ, the world, the flesh, and the devil. That's what's controlling our lives. We are born in depravity. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is none righteous. No, not one. And the wages of that sin is death. Death. Dead in sin. Dead to God. 
natural man, having nothing to live for and really nothing to die for. Because of death, you and I and every person in this world, and I'm talking about those of you who are listening, we are going to live somewhere forever. And there's only two places. Heaven, hell. Oh, God wouldn't condemn people to hell. God is so gracious and so just. But God himself is pleading and carrying out through Jesus Christ who died on the cross for us that we would have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And John chapter 3 lets us know that, that uh, if we believe, we're not condemned. It's heaven. If we don't believe, we're condemned already. That's our destination. The natural man. Walking according to the world, the flesh, that's what controls our lives apart from Christ. And I like... The two words that start verse 4. Two powerful words in this context. But God. Oh, I like that. But God. What about God? Well, look at it. He's rich in mercy. For His great love, wherewith He loved us. Even when we were dead in sins, He's made us alive together in, with Christ. It's by grace you're saved. Undeserved favor. It's only God's grace that He didn't wipe us off the face of the earth. Man, you read in the Old Testament, you know, if, if you and I were God, which we certainly are not, we'd probably wiped out the, the universe with Adam and Eve. And God did wipe out everybody but Noah's family because of their sin. And the day's coming when Jesus Christ returns back to take his bride, the believers, to heaven with him. To meet him in the clouds of the sky and, and to be forever with the Lord. There's only damnation. We don't deserve it. Do we deserve to be able to say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed. Holy be thy name. You see, folks, God's grace has done it all. And we cannot work our way into it at all. There's nothing we can do. Notice what he goes on to say. Verse 6, He's raised us up together. He's made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Right now we're sons of God, heirs to the throne, joint heirs with Christ. And in the ages to come, why has he done this? He wants to show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are ye saved, through faith, that not of yourselves, it's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, his artistry, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. We're not saved by works. I don't care how wonderful you are and how kind you are and what kind of a grandparent you are, what kind of a husband and wife you are, what kind of a employee you are, employer. There's nothing. You can give a whole bunch of money or you can do a lot of serving a lot of people. That is not going to get us to heaven. The natural man has to have a supernatural work of God in his life. And that's where he receives. He takes the death of Christ in his behalf. And the resurrection of Jesus who lives. All religions in the world. You can go and study all of them. They're based on, upon the fact that if you will do what the God or whoever the leader is, you will be all right. Bible-believing Christianity says, no way. It's not by works. 
It's by the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And if you try to get to heaven any other way, you're not going to make it. And so we have the natural man. Uh, the Bible tells us in Romans uh, chapter 5, it's a very interesting passage, that uh, there's six ver three verses there I call your attention. If you want to look them up, you can. It's Romans chapter 5. And here it tells us in verse 6, when we were yet without strength, in other words, hopeless, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. Here we are, hopeless and not godly. But notice, Christ died for us. Verse 8, But God commendeth His love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. God is a holy God, folks. He cannot look upon sin. He cannot honor sin. But Christ died in our place. He took our punishment. Verse 10, For if when you were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of His Son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by His life. A natural man, the only way that he can have eternal life is to recognize that he has to become a new creation in Christ Jesus. That can only come as we allow God to work in our lives to salvation. And God's not willing that anybody go to hell. And if we go to hell, it's because we reject the free gift of God's grace. The natural man. Now go back to 1 Corinthians again. And notice what it says there in verse 16. Verse 15. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged in no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, but that he may instruct him? We have the mind of Christ. Here is the second man. You're either natural or spiritual. That means the Spirit of God, God Himself has worked a supernatural act in our life. As I've just quoted and, and mentioned to you, that we are now a new creation in Christ Jesus. All things passed away. All things become new. Now we've got a new head. Jesus Christ. The head of the church. The head of the individual. Now we have uh, in our lives, that which we're able to communicate. We can call Him our Father. Notice there in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 2. Go back up to, uh, to verse uh, 9. I hath not seen, ear heard, nor ear heard, all the things that God wants to put into our lives for those who love Him. Uh, he hath... Uh, that he, He's revealed to them by the Spirit of God who comes and dwells within us. The Spirit searcheth all things, yet the deep things of God. By the way, <clears throat> being a spiritual man doesn't mean that you're perfect. It doesn't mean that you never sin. It doesn't mean that you are some kind of a, a, of a, of a God. Being a, we have a sinful nature. It's too bad that when, when the Lord saved us, He didn't take away that old sinful nature. It's still there. And we blame Satan and we blame the world and a lot of things that are right within our own lives that we haven't dedicated to the Lord. We haven't separated to Him about. We haven't got Him out of our, uh, those things out of our lives. Where the selfishness and the pride and all these things that are uh, within us. And so a tr supernatural transformation takes place. And we become ambassadors for Christ. You see, as a Christian, you have the Spirit of God dwelling in your life. And, and what happens here is that He convicts us. Now, if you can sin and sin and sin and sin and sin and not have any conscience about it, 
not have any, not have any uh, uh, conviction that, oh, I, I'm wrong. Doubt, I doubt that you uh, really know Him because the Spirit of God wants to be in control of our lives and He's not going to be content to be second fiddle. And He'll prod and He'll chasten. More about that a little later. We're not, we're not, we're not perfect, but boy, when we sin, and we know when we sin, and when we, when we have idols in our hearts, idol worship was condemned all the way through the scriptures. What is idol worship? It's worshiping something more, something else more than you worship God. It's serving something else. And so when anything that comes between you and God is an idol. It could be a motorcycle. It could be a car. It could be a job. It could be money. Anything that comes between you and God is an idol. The, the spiritual man, when that comes into his life or her life, confesses. And if we confess our sins, he is grateful and he's just to do what? To forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And we're commanded not to sin, but when we do, we have an advocate, Jesus Christ, on our behalf as our head, as our Savior, who speaks to God on behalf of us, God the Father. Now folks, the spiritual man, what's it say about that? It tells us there in verse 15 that he discerns all things. And yet he's not discerned of no man. What happens is people can't look at you and say, you hypocrite. They see in your life inconsistencies. They see your actions. Uh, they, they hear your language. And then they say, oh, you're a Christian? You're no different than I am. Will you forgive me? God, will you forgive me? And He will. We're sensitive to the things of, of God and, the, and, and to the things of the world that are, that are wicked and carnal. And notice it tells us here in verse 16 that who has known the mind of the Lord that He may instruct Him? Huh, we have the mind of Christ. When we get saved, when we trust Christ, he, the Holy Spirit comes within us. Therefore, there's that spiritual man being dr driven and, and, and uh, guided by the Spirit of God that's within us. And we think the things of God. There's the world view and there's the biblical view. The carnal man and the Natural man are looking at the world view. The spiritual man looks at the biblical view, the view of God. How does he look at it? It doesn't make any difference what you and I like. Talk to teenagers. Well, I like that kind of music. It doesn't make a difference what music, the kind of music you like. It's the kind of music God likes. What honors him? What glorifies him? When you came to the wilds last year, uh, because of the type of service it was as far as the meal is concerned, each individual prayed for themselves. But every meal that we sit down to get at the wilds, we quote 1 Corinthians 10.31. What's it say? Whether therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do what? All to whose glory? It means do all to give the right opinion of the excellent character of our God. That's the spiritual man. Or the unsaved man and the carnal man are the kind of person that says, well, as long as it glorifies me, as long as it does what I want to do, as long as it meets my needs, 
Folks, a spiritual man is one who wants to please and honor God. He's a man who will confess his sins. He's a person that will manifest the fruit of the Spirit. You don't need to turn to this, but let me just read to you what this tells us here about the fruit of the Spirit. It tells us, verse 19 of chapter 5, Now the works of the flesh are manifest. Here's the unsaved man. Unfortunately, this is talking to, talking to believers. So uh, he, he, even in our own lives, the temptation, the works of the flesh are manifest, are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, which is loose living. There's all sexual sins. Idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, which is... Uh, just not getting along with people. Emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, all kinds of, of bitter relationships, which is always based upon pride. When there are issues with people, you can just mark it down. One or both, and it's probably the latter, are just prideful. And that's fleshly. Envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, all the partying, and such like. Of which I tell you before, and I have also told you in times past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But, verse 22, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. There's no law against those. The law doesn't condemn you with those things. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh and the affections and lusts. The internal cleansing, the fruit of the Spirit. A spiritual person will have fruit of the Spirit. You will be a servant to others. You'll be more concerned about others because you have the mind of Christ. And it tells us over in Philippians chapter 2 uh, that we do have the mind of Christ. And it says this, Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which also is in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, took upon him the form of a slave, a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross." A spiritual person is striving to be Christ-like, bearing the fruits of the Spirit that Jesus Christ has done. If you're a spiritual person, doesn't mean you're perfect, but it means you're more concerned about others than you are yourself. It means you're concerned to glorify God. And that leads us to the carnal man. That's in chapter 3 of 1 Corinthians. How sad this is. Here's these believers. And these believers, he says, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, is a church. Paul says, I can't come to you and say, I'm going to talk to you as spiritual people. You're not spiritual. What are you? You're carnal. Does anybody know what a carnivorous animal is? A meat eater. Flesh. 
A carnal person is a person that has to thrive upon the flesh. That's our old sinful nature that's still in us. And that's what controls us. You're carnal. Now, let me ask you, as you look at verse 1, are these people Christians or not? What do you think? What in that verse tells us whether they're Christians or not? Brother. They're called brothers. What else? There's another one. In they're babes in Christ. These are Christian people in this church that are living after the flesh and being satisfied in their lives through fleshly, worldly things. They're carnal. See, the difference between a natural man and a carnal man is whether they have Christ in their lives. From the outside, we usually can't tell. In fact, it goes on to say, Are ye not carnal and walk as men? Because the envying, the strife, the divisions, aren't you living after the flesh? And you're, you're living just like the natural man. God alone only knows whether you truly know Christ. Look at this. Here is man. Here we have a new nature. We've trusted Christ. Now, here is the flesh. The spiritual nature, the fleshly nature. And they're at war with each other, tells us in Galatians. Fighting. Our flesh fights with our spirit. So that we don't do things we want to do. Now what's the difference between a natural man and a carnal man? When the old flesh rises up and gets control in any situation. If you don't have the spiritual nature, you don't have any conviction. You just keep going and going and going. But if you have the spiritual nature, He is not going, the Holy Spirit is not going to allow the flesh to be in control of one of God's children. So notice, He rises up and convicts or chastens. You, you can tell a lot about who's a believer or not a believer by whether he gets chastened by God. As a parent, do you chasten your kids when they do wrong? Does the boss chasten you when you do wrong as an employee? So you can tell if there's no conviction. But if there's chastening, if there's conviction, the conscience is smitten. Probably he's a Christian who is living carnally. I think it's very interesting. I should have brought this up a little earlier. Back in chapter 2, uh, it tells us that, uh, verse 11, For what man knoweth the things of a man save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so things that of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Now we receive not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. How do I know what's right? How do I know what to do? Where do I get the power to do it? How many of you have a dog at home? Does that dog know where you are right now? He knows where you are? Your dog knows where you are? You talk to him and he knows that you're here in this service here at State Line Ministry? And when you get home, you say, Hey, Pooch, I'll tell you what. Boy, uh, we had a good time this morning. Uh, thanks for taking care of things here. Now that dog has certainly has uh, instinct, uh, a lot of stink, but uh, <laughs> but you you know uh, the, the the dog has certainly uh, doesn't have a self um, the words 
get me here that I want to use, but awareness. Hmm? Self -awareness. self awareness. He's aware, but he doesn't have self awareness. He has he has self determination. He has determination, but not self determination. It doesn't come forth in him. He is, has to be taught it. So you you get back home and you say, "Hey, Pooch, uh, we were there and uh, uh, we had an old man preach to us and." Uh, uh, we had a lot of fun talking and taking prayer requests and all. And uh, I'm sure glad you took care of things. Now, you can talk to that dog or that dog will look at you and his ears will perk up. And, and But he doesn't understand that. Why? Because he's a dog. Here's his level. Here's man's level. Man has self-determination. Man does have uh, that opportunity as a soul as he believed God breathed into man and he became a living soul that makes a difference between a man animal and, and God or, or a, and a human in other words that dog cannot understand the details of why and what we do it takes a man it takes a man to understand a man that's what that verse is saying right alright here's God up here here's man here Man cannot understand the things of God. It takes God in the life of a man to have him understand the things of God. So you have the natural man, you have the uh, spiritual man, and you have the carnal man. He's called a babe in Christ. Some people, without the Spirit of God speaking to their heart, are not understanding what I'm saying here today. This carnal man has no devotion to God and His Word. He is a person that uh, has to have milk, take a little baby. I tell you what, I'm going to make a real man out of you, son. You're only two, three weeks old, but I want you to have some beef. I want you to get off this milk business. You choke die. And these folks here, you you get beyond the stories. You know, when you're preaching, uh, you can tell what kind of audience you have because they respond to your jokes, they respond to your illustrations, but they don't respond to a meaty section of the Word. They're babes. they got to be nurtured. And oh, what a responsibility we who know Christ and we who are by God's grace uh, spiritually led to have a responsibility to feed the sheep. You see, folks, God saved us to glorify Himself. When you go to the book of Ephesians chapter 1, it's a very interesting thing. Here it tells us that God has chosen us in Him as those who believe in Him to become sons of God and He adopts us into His family. Why does He adopt us as a son? Notice. It tells us that we would be to the praise of His glory. It tells us in Ephesians chapter 1 why He gives to us an inheritance. You see, He makes us His Son. He gives us an eternal inheritance. Why? It says that we should be to the praise of His glory in verse 12. He's given to us the Holy Spirit to dwell in our lives. We're sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance, the down payment of our inheritance, until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of His glory. Hey folks, we become His sons. We have an inheritance that's steadfast and sure. And we have the Holy Spirit to seal us unto Christ. To secure us. Why? That He'd be praised. 
Not that, oh boy, I must be something God's, uh, He's chosen me to be one of His children. <laughs> no. All we are, everything we do, should be to give that right character, right opinion of God. Because this is what God's purpose is for our lives. Now, I want you to go back to Revelation chapter 3. This is the final passage I'm going to deal with. Here's a message, message to the church. And the last church is the church of Laodicea. And I want you to notice in verse 15. Here's the messenger. Here's uh, uh, the preacher. Uh, here's Christ saying, I know thy works. God knows everything about you and me. He not only knows our actions, He knows our words, He knows our thoughts. He knows their works of the church. And He says that thou art neither cold nor hot. Now, the natural man is cold to the things of God. The spiritual man is hot for the things of God. He said, I, w I wish that thou wert cold or hot. He said, here you are. You're not, you're not natural. You are saved. But you're not spiritual. You're carnal. You're cool. Oh, I wish that you were either hot or cold. This thing of being cool. This thing of being carnal. This thing of saying, yeah, I know the Lord. Yeah, I'm saved, but living like the devil. Only God knows whether you're saved or not. God knows our works. And He knows that this church was not hot and not cold. And because ye are lukewarm... Neither cold nor hot. I'll spew thee out of my mouth. God says, you make me sick. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased in goods and have need of nothing. Self-sufficient. Knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich and with white raiment that thou mayest be clothed and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear and anoint thy eyes with salve that thou mayest see. Now verse 19. He knows our works. We feel self-sufficient. He chastens his children. As many as I love I rebuke and chasten. If you really love somebody you don't let them get away with doing wrong. God loves us. I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. I'm wondering here this morning, those sitting here, those that are listening, watching, do you need to repent? Is there things in our lives that we need to take care of before we leave this room? Lord, I haven't glorified you in this thought. I haven't glorified you in this action. I haven't glorified you in my motives for even being here or even listening to it. What is repentance? Repentance is turning, turning from our sin. And you can't take faith away from repentance. You turn from your sin and you trust God for forgiveness. And He's promised to give it. Now, obviously, we could have taken this message and spread it over three or four messages. We have, I have tried today to define from what God says 
about who we are. Which one are you? Are you one who's the natural person? Never had the supernatural work of God in your life? Are you striving by the grace of God to walk in the Spirit? Allow God's Spirit to control you rather than your emotions and rather than your actions and rather than what's around us? Are you truly that person that is hot for God? Not cold to the things of God. You have a biblical worldview. You have a Christ view. You're not going to allow the flesh to control you. Or is there a lot of apathy in our lives? Oh, well, you know, I, I know that I'm gonna, I, I need to go and, and be in church. I need to be in the Bible studies. I need to do what's right. And maybe I'll get a few uh, points in heaven, you know, maybe. Hey, folks. Which one? Heads bowed, please. Eyes closed. Will you search your heart? David wrote, Search me, O Lord, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me. And lead me. Lead me to yourself. We pray that we have been a blessing to you. For further assistance, call us at 864-270-1472 anytime. Send email to info at stlmm.org or visit our website at www.stlmm.org. Like any ministry, it costs money to operate. Please consider supporting this ministry as God leads you with your prayers and your financial gifts by going to www.stlmm.org and clicking on Donations.